Two of the most talked about phones that were released recently are the iPhone XS and the Pixel 3 from Google. And both Google and Apple have been very keen to emphasize the camera capabilities of their respective devices. Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. And I've had both cameras, I reviewed both of them recently, you can find those videos here on this channel. And I've taken the opportunity to take both cameras out, snap some photos and see how the cameras compare. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So basically I went on a little trip out and about taking some photos with these two devices and I want to look specifically at three aspects. First of all, the portrait mode that you get on both the Pixel and on the iPhone using the rear and the front facing cameras. Secondly, the zoom. Now on the iPhone that is an optical zoom and on the Google Pixel 3 it is this super res zoom because it only has that one lens on the back. And thirdly, just a general look at the photos that you can take using these cameras. So let's just dive straight in and see what pictures I was able to take. Okay, so let's start with a portrait picture uh, using the front facing camera. And here we have the iPhone camera and it looks very nice. The background, the building there is all blurred out. However, you do see the mistake. There was a car just going past there and over my shoulder, the uh, image processor has kept that car in focus and it isn't uh, blurred out. Now, if you compare that to the one from the Pixel, there's also a car going past. It's a little larger, it was in the closer lane to me. However, the Pixel has managed to keep that blurred out. And of course, the nice background there all blurred out. I'd be interested to hear in your comments below on which background blurring do you think looks more realistic? Is it the one from the Pixel or the one from the iPhone XS? And if we compare the two photos together, there's one thing that's evidently clear and that is the dynamic range is better on the Pixel 3. Here we can see that the uh, blue sky is much, much bluer uh, and the colors seem to pop just slightly more. On the iPhone there, there's all gray in the background. So I think overall, because of the car mistake, because of the colors, I'll give this round to the Pixel 3. Now let's move over to the portrait mode using the rear facing camera. Here is a carving of a shepherd. And you can see here that the iPhone's done a pretty good job of actually uh, finding the figure there in the foreground and blurring out the background. And if you compare it to the Pixel, you'll actually see very, very similar results. One thing I will say is that the Pixel seem to slightly overexpose this picture. So I think overall, the, of the two, the picture from the iPhone is slightly better. And then if we move over to this carving of a dog, there's two things to notice. First of all, that the uh, picture on the right, which is from the Pixel 3, is actually a lot warmer. And because it's warmer, actually it seems to, the browns seem to be a lot darker. But I think really the picture on the left does show a more truer representation of the colors. However, on the left we see with the iPhone that that post that's behind the dog carving there is out of focus, whereas on the picture on the right is actually in focus, which is actually more natural because it was literally right behind the head of the carved dog there. So actually that's a truer picture. So I think overall I would give that one a draw. And interestingly enough, I did post that picture onto Twitter and a lot of people were saying the picture on the left is better, a lot of people were saying the picture on the right is better, and I think even Twitter kind of came to the conclusion that this picture was a draw. Now while we're talking about portrait mode, I did a picture of some objects here. So here you see this can of WD-40 and the box for the Pixel 3 XL. And as we saw when I reviewed the iPhone XS, not always is the object detection good on this. And you can see there's quite a lot of blurring on the box there from the iPhone. However, when you move over to the Pixel 3, you can see it has much better edge detection for the can and for the uh, Pixel 3 box. So I would say when it comes to objects, that the uh, Pixel 3 is the clear winner. And also we can see the same thing here when we have just the can of WD-40. Notice down the right hand edge there, that white part of the label that's just disappearing around the kind of the edge there, that's much more blurred out on the iPhone compared to the Pixel 3. Now I wanted to test out the zoom. So here is a picture of some flowers using the iPhone and also now using 
the, um, the Pixel 3, and this is at one times magnification. Have I then zoomed in with the optical zoom on the iPhone and with the super res zoom on the Google 3? And if you actually put them side by side, what I'm actually quite astounded to notice is that the picture on the left, the one from the iPhone, is much, much softer and loses a lot of detail. And in fact, I was so shocked about this because I was assuming the one on the left with the optical zoom would be much better. I actually downloaded a second time these photos from the phone just to make sure I hadn't mixed them up somehow in my processing, but that's actually how it is. Even though the right-hand picture is using super res zoom, it is actually a much clearer photo. So again, I would give this point to the Pixel 3. And again, here is another picture of a building using the optical zoom and using the uh, super res zoom. And as you can see, side by side, the dynamic range looks good, the colors look good, uh, and the detail looks good on both pictures. So ultimately, I would call, in this particular case, I would call it a draw. And then I want to look at just two more pictures. This is one of some ice cream. This was taken with the uh, iPhone XS, and here it is taken on the uh, Google Pixel 3. And as you can see, they're very, very similar. And if you put them side by side, or one above the other as it is, there's very, very hard to tell the difference between these two shots. The colors are good, the depth is good, the shadows are good. Actually, they're both very, very good pictures. So again, I would call this a draw. And the final picture I want to show you is taken at night time. Now this is the one from the iPhone. I'm going to show you the one taken from the Pixel 3, but just to note this is not using the new night sight feature because it wasn't officially available at the time when I took the picture. So here is the one from the Pixel 3. And if you put them side by side, well, it's quite interesting, isn't it? Which one is actually the best? It's quite hard to tell. I think the detail is good in both of them. I think that maybe in terms of noise, the one from the iPhone looks slightly better. However, in terms of richness and sort of colors, if you look at the yellows of the street lamps, for example, I would say the Pixel 3 seems to have done a better job picking out the colors in that darkness. So again, maybe I would call it a draw, depending on whether you're more worried about color or you're more worried about noise to see which one would actually come out on top. And so there you go. So that's quite an interesting comparison. There were many occasions when both pictures were equally as good with each other. The colors, the depth, the contrast, the uh, dynamic range were all very, very good. There were a couple of times when maybe the Pixel 3 did a better job, let's say, with the portrait mode. And I really was quite shocked about the zoom there on that petal of that flower that actually it was still better on the Pixel 3, even though it doesn't have that optical zoom. But I really would like to hear your comments below. Tell me which one you thought actually did a better job. For me, overall, I'll declare the Pixel 3 a winner, but only by a smidgen, really not by very much at all. So my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Please don't forget to subscribe and it's really important that you hit that bell notification icon so that you get told every time I drop a new video. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.